Welcome to SciTech Culture with Steve Kern and Ben Warner, where we examine science, technology, and culture in the 21st century. Visit our website at scitechculture.com. Hello and welcome to SciTech Culture, the show where we discuss science, technology, and culture in its myriad of forms. My name is Ben Warner and I'm joined once again by my good friend and colleague, Steve Kern. How are we today, Steve? I'm good, thanks, Ben. Summer in the Northern Hemisphere, but winter down here. We're feeling it, but we're, at least we're getting a bit of sun today, which we might have to enjoy this afternoon. That's right. <laughs> and close to the solstice too. Yes, absolutely. The shortest day um, or longest day, depending on where you are. Um, So today we're going to be talking about uh, WWDC 2016 and the expectations of Apple. Now, um, at the time we're recording this, obviously, WWDC hasn't occurred. And by the time it gets published, it will have occurred. So we're not going to spend time prophesizing what we think uh, may or may not be announced um, uh, because it may turn out to be wrong in a few days' time <laughs> when we when we go to air. But I think it, it's more of an important discussion now that uh, we talk about the um, what the expectations of Apple are in this environment that we're in. Um, I think we've gotten to the point where what they announce isn't groundbreaking or earth-shatteringly um, like stop the press type moments and it's probably unfair to expect that I think at this point and uh, I think people are still like wanting that the first iPhone announcement to happen again you know it just the you know that was you have your breakthrough announcements but um, you know I think uh, before we get into the more specifics of this I, I'm just amazed that people just take all of this for granted you know, it was back in 2007, the st- all this, um, you know, iPhone stuff that we're doing today would be considered um, almost uh, fanciful and uh, unimaginable that you could do all of these things. And now we do them as a matter of course. We use these devices as a matter of course. And it's like, well, what have you done for me lately kind of thing. <laughs> and I don't know if... Uh, that's fair to put that on Apple or any other manufacturer, to be honest, because they've gotten that good that, you know, it's become dull. And that's usually where it has to go, I think, you know, until the next big thing comes along, which will be a totally different thing. Oh, that's right. And I think, you know, the iPhone was a a once in a generation uh, kind of device and we're still waiting that next device you know let's face it watches are just small phones new macbooks are just new macbooks and we're just waiting we're waiting for the next thing you know mac uh ipad pros are just ipads so (laughs) i I don't know i don't know where it's going probably nowhere (laughs) at least for the uh the time being maybe if um we can start with the ipad because i was thinking about this the other day that um i'm still you uh, i've still got a use for the uh, third gen ipad that i got um well over four years ago and although it's a bit clunky for some things because ios 9 runs pretty slow on it um You know, I was trying to figure out, well, okay, I'm in the store, I I see the iPad Pro, you know, the new ones or the even the iPad Air 2 still, you know, still decent. But I I can't, uh, even after all this time, they're they're far superior to that iPad that I've got now. But I can't see any reason why I would buy the new ones. And maybe this is, uh, you know, I don't know if it's a reflection of uh, what everyone's buying activity is like, but... Maybe, you know, you think about iPads, um, you know, meteoric rise in the sales growth, um, you know, when it started and now it's tailing off and everyone, oh, you know, it's dropping and, and whatever. And I'm, I was looking at this and I was thinking the, the one of the things that I think is a problem here is maybe not, it's not so much the hardware, it's uh, the software, the um I don't. They've been speaking, you know, off on the side for years that iOS probably needs to have a separate version for the iPad. You know, obviously the same core is the same, but um, the way the interface works on the iPad doesn't take advantage of the iPad, for instance. So I think iOS, as it stands today, works really well for a, a device that is as small as an iPhone. Yeah, but it doesn't work. Um, as good as what it it doesn't maximize the usefulness and the potential of the iPad in its current form. And the iPad Pro, the big one that's come out, is a classic example of that. Um, the fact that you know you got the rows of icons and yeah. 
you know, there's all that empty space between each icon and couldn't, couldn't they design some sort of interface that somehow takes better advantage of that, especially if they want it to be a PC replacement? Well, that's right. Do they, though? I mean, I really don't know why they keep on uh, producing laptops, uh, to be honest. Uh, you know, really, is there any need for uh, any, you know, even the MacBook mm. to have uh, a separate screen and keyboard? Maybe we're not ready as humans to take that leap. Mm. I certainly prefer to have the uh, clamshell laptop, but I know plenty of people who are just very happy with the Mac, uh, with the i iPad Pro because mm-hmm. it is effectively, you know, an iPad Air without the uh, the lid. So it's interesting. I think it's a usage thing. But you're definitely right about iOS. I think it's time now as, you know, what we're probably mobile digital devices are morphing into standard uh, like uh, digital devices in this mm. post-PC era. So it's, it's one of those things I, I really, I think, you know, Maybe this is one of the big announcements we're going to see at some stage soon where uh, Apple might even unify all of the OS, OS X. Mm, exactly. Um, it's, um, I just think in some ways, you know, it might be a bit unfair to say they're moving too slowly, but um, you would think that by now they, and maybe we might see this, uh, we can comment on it on our next episode if they happen to announce this at WWDC this week, that um, they need to do something fundamental for the iPad in terms of the changing of the, the way it works. Um, you've got a device there that, can, that needs to be able to truly multitask, do multiple things at once, um, and your laptop doesn't have any issues doing that. And I think the uh, so- iOS software seems to have gotten to a point where it's sophisticated enough to do that, but somehow the uh, the way the interface is designed doesn't allow for that to happen too easily. Classic yep. example is, um, you know, travel research, you know. I would never do that on an iPad because... Um, I was just having a look the other day um, at something and I had to have 12 browser windows open to compare things and having that the keyboard and the mouse there allowed for very fast switching yeah. between those things. And it seems like they haven't really been able to um, sort of uh, get that same type of interaction into an iPad. No, I, I mean, and that must be probably part of the, uh, I think, operating system. You know, yeah. the ability to layer windows and switch between, uh, I guess, uh, windows in, in an OS X environment certainly creates a much more effective way of taking notes. Um, I, I just, yeah, it's definitely not as functional, but maybe we'll see more voice command coming in. Mm. Um, these are the things I'd like to know really when it comes to uh, the developer conference. One thing that I'm quite intrigued about is we've seen uh, both Google and Facebook now really come to to um, creating portals for third-party developers to come in onto their mm. platforms and directly interact with them and create um, apps that work directly with the uh, appropriate platform. I assume Apple's going to do the same thing. I certainly know that with regard to the um, TV uh, uh, ML that they, they run through Apple TV, that they're allowing developers now to create specific apps that will work mm. within the uh, uh, TV ML environment. So, um, you know, maybe they're going to extend that. So rather than just creating an app for, for iOS and that environment, maybe they'll actually allow uh, developers now to uh, work directly with the platform. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. That's, that seems to be the trend anyway. Well, um, they, they should. I know th- uh, they seem to, I guess they, they, they're slower in implementing a lot of this sort of thing in terms of opening up. They're trying to, <clears throat> in the past where they've uh, opened up their closed system, they've only done it in very specific ways, in very specific instances that in the end they still control. Yeah, well, TV <clears throat> is an example of that where they're, they're actually like, probably because it's a platform, once mm. again, it's on its own, you know, uh, and... And it's a very specific type of usage. So you're basically creating a, an app that will pull content from wherever it is so it can appear on Apple TV. Obviously, they can set up a, a portal for developers directly to interact with the platform. I don't know if they're so keen to do that in real time with uh, their other operating systems. 
Yeah, and the maybe you know that that's what you should we should all be really thinking about whenever we see a, a developer conference like this is all these incremental changes. And sometimes um, it's not about the big bang announcement; it's about the um, the little things. Um, you know, we were talking before we got on that um, you know around the probably 2009 2010 era iPhone, for instance, was a lot less functional than what it is now. Yeah. Um, and uh, there are things that, but the thing is, they kind of snuck in all of these f- pieces of functionality under the almost under the radar. And it's like, oh, all of a sudden it can do this. All of a sudden it can do that. And it's the, it's just sort of incrementally added. Yeah, it transforms the experience over time, but it's not something that happens in an overnight um, capacity, so to speak. It's um, something that occurs over years rather than having that initial you know sort of wave of excitement in one announcement it's and i think that that's where um a lot of the reaction to you know these types of announcements that apple make now um are maybe a little bit unfair in that uh that's what they're doing you know they're 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 doing it a bit at a bit more of a slower evolutionary pace rather than trying to knock it all out and uh, I think an analogy I heard was um, if you've got like a race car, um, it's quick. To, you know, you, the the acceleration from one to a hundred for yeah. zero to hundred is really quick. But then trying to get from a hundred to say a hundred and twenty might take the same amount of. Uh, uh, you know, it's bad. Uh, it's probably different anyway. But um, but going from a hundred to one hundred and twenty yeah. is probably about the same effort, even yeah. though there's less less increase in speed. And th- there's something analogous is happening here. I think. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's interesting too because we've spoken a lot about software really, yeah. um, assuming that Apple aren't going to change any anything or bring out any new hardware, which is an interesting one. Do, do you think there's – I mean, I know it's a developer conference, but it be interesting to know if uh, like anything that they could be developing there might pertain to, to new hardware that, that could – or, or link up to some sort of new hardware of the future. Well, well, I mean that's that's the thing. It's it's hard to know where they'll go with it. They have um, announced hardware in the past at this type of uh, conference. Yeah. Whether they're going to, you know, talk about, for instance, some of their often rumored um, projects around the home, uh, around the car, anything like that. Whether they'll even mention anything like that is who knows that might be too future a technology to be discussed at this point it just seems to me that if they're going to announce hardware it's probably going to be tweaks to a lot of the things that they've got out now yeah it's interesting to say that i mean historically apple have been very secretive i mean you know it's impossible even to tell when the you know the next version of you know anything will be released Mm. even though you can sometimes guess but uh, are they too secretive? I mean, I'd never have bought a Sony phone if they had actually admitted this time <laughs> last year that they're going to bring out a small format phone. Yeah. You know? So I just, you know, I wonder. I wonder, you know, is it time for them to start to say, oh, actually, we are doing this? You know, I, I think we're in a very different environment now. You know, you've got guys like Elon Musk who do everything open source, you yeah. know, like – all the patents, everything is visible, and um, he doesn't care about the competition. In fact, I, I believe he'll probably be overtaken by competitors because um, he's the guy taking the risks. But he's opening up the industry. Yeah. By doing that, he's going to create a market, which, which if there was only one player, such as uh, you know Tesla, for instance, um, it would take years to develop that market. By doing what he's doing, he's actually opening up the market and creating a whole new market in a matter of years rather than a matter of decades. But is it time for Apple to sort of move to that sort of model and say, hey, we're going to, you know, do this. It's new, it's exciting, and try to take everybody along for the ride because let's face it, they, they succeed pretty much at everything they do. There's only been really a few product failures along the way. And... Um, I think it might be beneficial not just for Apple but for the whole world. Yeah, but then I guess there's the the whole corporate question. Um, the reason you, you would keep things private from a business perspective is to get the jump on um, your competitors. And, um, you know, Apple, as, as much as the, the rhetoric is that Steve Jobs created it and with Steve Wozniak, but the Jobs ethos is that, um, you know, he wanted to put a dent in the universe and improve people's lives and all of that. 
but he wanted to make a good uh, a good buck in the process. Um, whereas um, there are others that might have the same goals, but they don't have any interest in um, you know making the buck every time. Yeah, and maybe Apple that's still infused in Apple's culture. Oh, I think it definitely is infused in Apple's culture, but Google same position. Uh, mm. They're doing a lot more, you know, open source development, and I think so are Facebook. Now, obviously, it's in those organisations' interest to do that because they've got the platform. They want the platform to be everywhere. They want to control basically the world with their platform. So it makes sense to say, well, you know, hey, here's our source code. Mm. Make something that works with this, and then you know whatever it is that works with this will be on your platform, and then you just buy them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Apple doesn't have quite the same business model, but no. you know, I wonder. I wonder if if you if a lot of the world starts to go that open source, that lockdown mentality is a very 20th century lockdown mentality. I'm not sure it has relevance anymore and it could see Apple isolating. And if they can't come up with the next biggest thing, then uh, they really will be in trouble because they'll be so far behind and they'll shrink back to where Apple was as a niche competitor in the 1990s. Unless um, they take the approach that, yes, we'll announce things, but we won't say how we're doing it. Um, and the, in which case it would only satisfy, I don't know, people like us who are looking for the next uh, model of something and can wait for when they say it's going to be released. <laughs> well, that's right. Now, Apple traditionally has always said that uh, they, they never do that because they want people to buy, you know, and they're getting the best anyway right up until they change whatever it is they offer and then yeah. they get it the best again. So, um, but it's an interesting, it's an interesting thing. I mean, Apple never runs out models, never has run out sales, it never has, you know, anything like that. So it's, it's quite obviously hardwired into their, into their culture and, and into the way they sell. But, um, you know, people now want the latest and they want to know when they can get the latest and, you know, I, I wonder. Anyway, just, just a thought. Anyway, we'll um, slowly start to wrap it up, but um, WWDC has um, been the forum for quite a number of interesting announcements in the past. Um, I think you know, this time we're only going to get um, the uh, the usual evolutionary stuff again, and I think it'll be you know those nice little extra things that you know you want or maybe you didn't think of that just overall enhance the experience that was there to begin with, um, and. Uh, you can only hope. I guess we'll find out uh, next week when I, I will do a little, a quick little catch up uh, next time about um, what they actually announced. That uh, maybe they they do show a little bit of the future um, at this thing because at a developer conference, that's the the best place to do it. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely exciting. I hope I hope they do announce something that really goes makes us go wow. But I can't see it happen. <laughs> oh, well, we'll find out. All right, thanks for that, Steve. Um, we'll wrap it up there. Um, so uh, don't forget our website, SciTechCulture.com. You can get all of our links and content there. You can interact with us on Twitter, Google+, and Facebook. So I'd love to hear from you. We've got our uh, photos on Instagram and Flickr. Uh, and if you think anyone's interested in these uh, discussions that Steve and I have on a regular basis, feel free to send them to our website. We'd uh, greatly appreciate that. All right, so that's it for this episode. We'll catch you next time.